In the sound component of the light and sound strand, one of the main ideas you're going to reinforce with your students is that sound is caused by vibrations. One of the ways I've used to exemplify this in my classroom is to make use of the senses. And so with my students, we've generally started with touch. So if they speak into a balloon, they can feel that to and from motion on the side of the balloon that's regularly repeated, and that's really what vibrations are. And if they use a high voice and a low voice, they can really feel and compare the difference in vibrations on the side of the balloon. A good visual example that many teachers use uh, makes use of a container, some plastic wrap. I've put a little bit of salt on top here, another container or pot with a, a wooden spoon, and you want to hit the back of this container like that, and you're going to see the disturbance, the hopping of the, of the, uh, the rice or, or sugar, or in this case salt, on top of, uh, of the plastic wrap, and that's generally caused by the vibrations from the air that are coming in, and you see that visually with the salt. Another good uh, visual example uh, of vibrations, of, of seeing vibrations, mimics the function of the ear canal. So if you use the tube from a, a roll of paper towel here and wrap the top of a, a balloon, you just cut the bottom off of a balloon, you wrap it over one side of the tube, and then cut a little piece of aluminum foil here with the shiny side out, tape it to the balloon, which is mimicking the, the eardrum, so to speak. And using a flashlight, have your students reflect that light onto a white surface, maybe in a dark space, so they can clearly see it. And if they speak into one end of the, uh, of the tube using a, a high and a low voice, they're going to see those vibrations vibrate the drum here, and they're go it's going to shake that little piece of aluminum foil, and you're going to see that on the white surface there. And so if they pay close attention, they'll see those vibrations, which is really a good example of what uh, and how the eardrum works. Another common activity used in classrooms that explores vibrations makes use of a regular ruler and the edge of a table. When students pluck the ruler, it vibrates, they can hear it, they can see it, and it vibrates differently when it's closer to the edge of the table or further away, which is really an example of pitch. They can explore that. A good way to make this uh, a visual example is by using a yardstick a felt-tipped marker, which you can tape to one end, and have a student hold a sheet of paper, the edge here, and when you pluck it on the end of the table, it creates a good visual example of what these vibrations look like. And those vibrations will look different if they're closer to the table and further away. You want to ask your students what's the difference between those two things with respect to frequency and, uh, and some of the regular nomenclature that follows that. Some easy activities you can use to explore the sound that vibrations make. Use uh, one of these ribbed tubes that you can easily get at the dollar store. When you spin it around, it's going to make different sounds at different pitches here. That depends on the speed that you twirl it. The reason why this works the way it does is as air passes through the inside, the ribbed nature of the tube gets that air vibrating and when it comes out you hear the sound that you do. This is interesting when you have 30 students doing it in your classroom, but it can be quite impressive when they're all in tune at the same pitch. Another activity you can use makes use of a balloon and a hex nut that has six sides. You take the hex nut, you put it inside the balloon and blow it up and when you spin it, it makes this sound. The neat thing about that is that it's an example of the ridges that are on this hex nut and they create that vibration as it goes around the inside of the balloon and that's what creates the sound. We've just seen that sound is created by vibrations. Let's look at how sound travels. Now this model here with a grooved ruler and a few marbles is going to represent air molecules for us here, these marbles. If we take one marble and strike the others with it, notice the motion as it goes through the marbles and out the other end. Now in the air these molecules are generally much further apart, but uh, this wave motion is 
quite similar. Using everybody's favorite toy, the slinky, you can explore different types of waves. Have your students pair up and move the slinky from side to side and ask them what they see and what's happening. Well, they've just created a transverse wave which best represents uh, what strings do when plucked or hammered. Another type of wave that you can use and explore is a longitudinal wave. This is when you move the slinky forward and backward really quick. And this best represents the sound wave. And when you're doing that, you'll notice that there are regions of compression when the slinky is closest together and regions of rarefaction when it's furthest apart. This also demonstrates that molecules of air might not move a great distance when a sound wave goes through them, but the energy that is created by that sound can travel a long distance. A fun way to examine pitch with your class is to have one of your students bring in their bicycle. Set the bicycle up on a table or on the ground and bring out some hockey or some playing cards with a clothespin. Set the clothespin and the card up on the frame like this, have it pointed into the spokes just like the olden days, and ask them what they think they're going to hear. What's the sound going to be like and how does this have to do with, with pitch? As you start spinning the pedal, slowly this wheel is going to turn, you're going to hear a tapping sound, and as it gets faster, maybe about 20 taps per second, you're going to hear a low pitch sound. And when you increase the speed of the wheel, it's going to get higher, and a higher pitch will be heard. In this activity, we're going to be looking at the reflection of sound. You're going to need two umbrellas and an analog wristwatch with a second hand that ticks. And that's important because that's what we're going to be listening for on the other side of the room. So once you have your wristwatch, set it on the umbrella shaft close to the inside here. And once it's sitting there properly and not ready to fall, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have your students take the other umbrella and align the shafts up, maybe to a few meters away to start with. And once they open that umbrella, have them set their ear as close to the inside as they can and ask them what they hear. What happens when they move the umbrella around? You should be hearing the second hand from the wristwatch in the inside of this umbrella on the other side of the room. Make sure your shafts are perfectly parallel and see how far you can go and still hear that wristwatch. Maybe move the wristwatch up and down the shaft, see where that sweet spot is where you can hear it best. In this investigation, we're going to be looking at the reflection and the absorption of sound. We're going to need a headset and a tea towel that you're going to wrap around one of the earpieces. You're going to need maybe a stand set up, a few tubes, these have come from rolls of paper towel, and a few objects that may reflect or absorb sound, such as these here. So when you start off, you're going to turn on some music and hook up your headphones, and you're going to set up your headphones just in front of the stand. You're going to put uh, one of your, your, your materials in front of it, and using a tube, you're going to set it next to the earpiece and about 45 degrees uh, from the, the material in question. With your second tube, you're going to set it 45 degrees from that tube and about a few inches away as well. You're going to have your students listen into it to see if they hear any sound. Now they can also experiment with the length of this tube and how close they're holding it and the different materials used. You might want to use another type of material to see whether it's reflected as well. What your students are going to notice is that some materials reflect sound quite well in another direction. These generally have a smooth surface, whereas others with more of a rough surface tend to absorb sound and they hear less uh, out of the second tube. That was light and sound in a nutshell with materials that you can find around your classroom, school, or at home. Many extensions you can take from here, certainly with art and color, music, uh, and the building of instruments and how they work. Uh, hopefully this was very helpful to you. We'll see you in another video.